Here's a flash revision guide on the history of the atom, including how scientists helped to develop the model of the atom to what it is today and the experiments they carried out. Let's get into it. Atoms make up every single thing in the universe, but our understanding of what an atom is has evolved significantly over time and it all started a thousand years ago with an ancient Greek philosopher called Democritus. He believed that all matter was made up of tiny particles called atomos, which could not be broken down into smaller pieces. The term atomos means uncuttable in Greek, which represented the idea that these particles were the smallest building blocks of everything and could not be divided further. Now if we fast forward to the 1800s, John Dalton, who was an English scientist, developed Democritus's ideas and said that all matter was made up of tiny spheres and he called them atoms. He also said that atoms of the same element were identical. So if you had a block of iron, he said that it only contained iron atoms and all of those atoms were the same. If you had a block of copper, however, the atoms would be identical to each other, but they would be different to the atoms of iron. This view changed in 1897 with JJ Thomson. He discovered negative charges in the atom, which we call electrons. This led him to propose a new model representing an atom. Instead of the atom being a single thing, he said that they were balls of positive charge that had negative electrons embedded within them, like plums in a plum pudding. Hence, he called this the plum pudding model. But the plum pudding model didn't last long. In 1909, Ernst Rutherford carried out the alpha particle scattering experiment. In this experiment, he fired positively charged alpha particles at a piece of thin gold foil. The gold foil was so thin that you could assume it to be one atom thick. During the experiment, he observed that most of the alpha particles passed straight through the gold foil, which told him that most of the atom must be made up of empty space. A small percentage of the alpha particles, however, were deflected in different directions. Some were deflected a little and others were deflected more. This showed him that the reason for these deflections was because the atom's mass is concentrated in a small area at its centre. This central mass must have been positively charged because the alpha particles that were fired at it were also positively charged. So if they were deflected away, they must have been repelled when they got close to it. This gave rise to the idea of a nucleus and the plum pudding model was replaced with the nuclear model, which had a nucleus with the negatively charged electrons orbiting it. The next development was in 1913 with Niels Bohr. He refined the nuclear model, specifically the area containing the electrons around the outside. He discovered that electrons didn't just orbit the nucleus randomly, but instead at specific distances where some were close and some were far. The path that these electrons took around the nucleus was known as electron shells or energy levels. All of Bohr's theoretical calculations aligned with his experimental observations and further experiments revealed more information about the nucleus. He found that the positive charge of a nucleus could be divided into whole numbers of smaller particles, each carrying the same positive charge. These particles were called protons. Fast forwarding around 20 years later leads us to James Chadwick. His experimental work provided evidence for the existence of another particle in the nucleus that had no charge. These were neutrons and the discovery of them further increased our understanding of the structure of atoms and this led to the model that we use now. And that's it for that topic guys. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.